Good morning to everybody here on the podcast, on Filter Podcast, or good evening, or maybe or good afternoon, depends what this is this podcast. I'm your host, Ernest E.J. Christian. It is December 4th, 2019, and we are in the midst of the holiday season, which also means the, the end of the college football season, the end. Uh, we got the college, you know, obviously at the uh, uh, championship weekend coming up this this coming weekend. We have bowl season in a few weeks to come. We got the uh, stretch run, the NFL season, NBA's in full in full gear. Uh, obviously, uh, lots going on in the world of sports. Uh, I do. Uh, I tried to do, to do uh, one of these uh, these pods uh, the last two days, but between work, between family, between other th- priorities, I couldn't, couldn't get. I couldn't even. I couldn't even carve off fifty minutes of time to do this. Um, I'm gonna try. To, to, I'm gonna try to move forward, um, but. This podcast today is also presented by the new Take Three Wrestling Podcast that myself, um, I, and my my good friends Joe Lopez and Mark, Mike Bernier just launched, or should I say, relaunch or reformatted? Uh, as, as as explained the last time you were on this on the show that uh, we had actually started a podcast over the summer, um, the Wrestling Retrospective, which was focused solely on covering old wrestling events from yesteryear. Uh, we did a couple episodes over the summer, and then we kind of stalled out. Not because we didn't want to do the podcast, just because we couldn't find any time. And then we got back together, as I said, we got back together again recently, and we said, look, we'll, we'll, we still want to pod together, but we want to kind of change up the format a little bit, and kind of cover new, not just the old, but the new also too. So we decided to change up the format a little bit, and, and now it's basically take two, uh, each of us come up with take a week, and we dive into it like in, in like in a roundtable fashion. So it's, it's, it's the first episode's out already, it came out Sunday, we, we had a really good time recording that one. Um... Uh, I think we covered uh, uh, we covered NXT and who could be the future champions. We covered. I brought in the uh, topic of uh, Mount Rushmore's all time. I mean, this is after the Bleacher Report just put out their uh, latest list and sparked some discussion on social media. And I believe also the elite of the AEW. So we're, we're off and running with that podcast. And I mean, this this one, this one episode in honestly, we're pretty happy about it. So again, this show today is brought to you by Take Three Podcast. Check it out. Take Three Wrestling Podcast on iTunes. Well, should I say on Apple Podcasts and on uh, Stitcher Radio and all that. Okay, so I was able to review all the games of the weekend. So what I'm going to do, rather than review all the games of the weekend, I'm going to going. I'm going to give you my... I'm going to break through the playoff picture right now in the AFC and the NFC right now. And you can see my locks. Um, we've been doing this locks thing with uh, typically with Kyle Nash on the studio report. We do it this every, every other week, whatever. But, of course, we won't be able to do it this week because, uh, again, scheduling issues. And t- time is kind of shortened now with, uh, with that. Um, but that being said, um, here is the playoff picture right now. If the playoffs started today in the AFC right now, the number one seed right now will be the Baltimore Ravens by virtue of the, and they have a tiebreaker over the New England Patriots, who also tend to. Um, but because of the tiebreaker that Baltimore beat New England a couple weeks ago, um, Baltimore has the number one seed. Number two will be New England still. Uh, number three will be Kansas City. And number four would be, uh, actually, no, I apologize. Number three will be Houston. And number four will be Kansas City, both at eight and four right now. Um, and in my opinion, all three, four of those teams are locked to make the playoffs. There's no question about that. Whether the position is different or not in the coming weeks, it, you know that's different. But in terms of will these three, four teams make the playoffs, I have no doubt they'll be in the playoffs. Uh, the wild card, number five the seed wild card, is the Buffalo Bills, who are 9-3. Very impressive. I think they're locked now. I mean, winning is – I, I said last week, I think they beat Dallas. There's no, there's, no, there's no question. I mean, I, I, I don't see this team losing four games the rest of the year. And even then, I, I'm not even sure if the other teams under them will actually win out. So I, I got Buffalo locked as a wild card team, um, and right now number six, and who might be coach of the year, um, depending on how this thing plays out. Uh, the Steelers right now will be the sixth seed in the AFC in the playoffs starting today. Uh, Mike Tomlin's doing a phenomenal job in Pittsburgh. Um, he is down to a third string quarterback. Okay, guys, he is down to a third string quarterback. This is a, this was actually supposed to be a, t- a year of transition, not having Antonio Brown. Not having Le- Le'Veon Bell, obviously, and yet they're seven and five in the thick of things in the, in the uh, playoff race. <clears throat> Gotta give Mike Tom credit there. Um, but I don't think they're a lock yet. I actually picked Tennessee a few weeks ago to make the playoffs, um, and they're right. They're tied with uh, Pittsburgh, um, and they're surging right now at seven and five as well too. Now they have, they have a pretty tough schedule ahead. They got the Saints on the schedule. Raiders, uh, I was thinking a little bit, so they can win that game. And I think the Texans twice, I believe, on the schedule moving forward. But uh, they won a big game against Indy this weekend, so that we'll see what happens there. 
All right, so let's go to let's go to the NFC side now. Now the players starting the NFC right now. You got a three. We got three teams right now with, with the same record, ten and two in the NFC. But right now the players starting today, the New Orleans Saints will be number one seed in the NFC. Number two be Seattle. Um, three would be I believe it's Green Bay. Yeah, it's Green Bay at three. Uh, four would be the the, the the pathetic NFC East leading Dallas Cowboys. I'm not even saying they're pathetic necessarily, but the entire division is pathetic at six and six. Um, it's pretty much a, sh- a shit show there in in Dallas. Uh, the five seed right now, right, right now, would be the point. The San Francisco Niners, of course, they play this weekend against the uh, New Orleans Saints, so that has a lot of implications for the for the rest of the uh, the uh, the conference in terms of playoff seeding and positioning. And number six seed right now, currently, would be the Minnesota Vikings. Now, I believe. Uh, San Francisco, Seattle, um, Green Bay. Um, uh, who was the other one? San Francisco, Green Bay. Uh, so yeah, New Orleans and Seattle all locks for the playoffs no matter what. And I still, I'm still keeping Minnesota's a lock, even though they only game ahead in the wild card. I'm very confident in them um, to hold on to the, the uh, one of the wild card spots, or even win the division if they catch up to Green Bay. Um, I don't think they'll fall apart rest of the way. I, I'm actually feeling better about the Vikings. I actually feel better about the Vikings now, post loss to Seattle, than I did before the game. <clears throat> so, um, the only lock, <coughs> the only lock I don't have on there, um, the only team that I, I don't, I'm, I, I'm not going to lock is the Dallas, Dallas Cowboys for obvious reasons, um, because as bad as Philadelphia has been the last couple of weeks. They're only a game behind, and it's still four games to play, so they can still uh, uh, mess that up. Now, if you ask me right now who I, how, how I feel about the NFC East, uh, who gets in, I, I, I think Dallas will figure it out. I think Dallas' team is too good. Um, a much better roster than Philadelphia. Philadelphia's just falling apart. You know, I mean, losing Miami. No offense to Miami, but losing Miami the way you did, that's just pretty bad. Um, so, again, I have five locks in the NFC. I have four in the AFC. Well, I have five now in the AFC now as well, too. So, I'm, I'm pretty confident about Buffalo getting the job done. Okay, so yesterday the oh wait real quick before we get to that um my uh, top five bottom five in the uh, power rankings week fourteen power rankings are as follows. Let's go to the bottom. Let's go to the sad five first. Twenty to thirty two. 28, Miami Dolphins, 29, Detroit Lions, 30, Washington Redskins, 31, New York Giants, 32, Cincinnati Bengals. I actually consider taking the Dolphins out of there, to be honest with you, because they've been really impressive on the last couple weeks. So I was considering either taking Miami out or and putting Detroit in or even Atlanta in. But uh, Miami's 28, uh, Detroit 29, Washington 30, uh, the Giants 31, and the Cincinnati Bengals at 32. Here you go. For the top five in the... Uh, Power rankings here. Um, same teams the last couple weeks, but a different order. Five, the Patriots. Four, the Saints. Three, the Niners. Two, the Seahawks. One, the Ravens. There you go. Again, one through five. Ravens, Seahawks, Niners, Saints, Patriots in that order. Uh, what else we got here before we go? Uh, the conference football, college football rankings are out. Playoff rankings are out. Uh, again, no surprise. The same fours last week in order. Actually, no. That's, that's, that's a lie. No, 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 LSU, oh, no, I, I, I apologize. The community still right now has LSU at two, Ohio State one, LSU two, uh, three, Clemson four, um, Georgia. Now, the, the shakeup really is in the bottom between five and six with Utah and Oklahoma, uh, five, and six, five and six, respectively. Um, <clears throat> the only issue I have right now, honestly, <clears throat> with the rankings is how did, how is LSU behind Ohio State? And I might say Ohio State's not good. They can win the whole, the whole thing this year. But LSU this year has better wins this year by, by far than Ohio State. Ohio State's best win this year is against Penn State, who, who are really good. Okay, LSU's beaten Florida, Alabama, and Auburn and Georgia. And if they and now, I expect to be if this weekend is in the title games, if LSU wins against Georgia in the SEC title game on Saturday, I expect LSU to be ahead of uh, uh, Ohio State no matter what happens in the Big Ten title game because. Um, you've beaten Jordan twice now, Alabama, with Tua, by the way. Uh, uh, you also have beaten uh, Auburn and Florida, with another top-ten team. So, again, I, as I said before in the past, they, the committee does this all the time. They, they try to throw a little zinger just for, I, I, I believe, for conversation's sake. Just my opinion, okay? So, this is a big weekend. Not a lot of chaos this week, honestly. Uh, if things go as planned, this, this will be your four next week. Whatever order it may be, um, and the only the only shake the only questions right now is one and two. My opinion, Clemson Clemson should be Virginia in, in the ACC title game. They are twenty nine point favorites over Virginia. 
Um, and then I, whether or not Georgia wins this weekend. If Georgia, if Georgia doesn't win, in my opinion, I believe if Oklahoma takes care of business, they should get in because they had beaten Baylor twice, better wins than Utah. But not a lot of chaos really going into this weekend. Um, a lot of teams that are teams that uh, are favored to do their job this weekend. I think the only the only mix up will be with Georgia and LSU, and uh, obviously the the five and six teams um, below what they do depending on what happens to Georgia and LSU. So uh, also yesterday news: Ron Rivera fired by the Panthers, five and seven record this year. Um, he had a decent tenure there. Went to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Uh, not surprising, really, to be honest, even more so the timing. Um, David Tepper said he got to change things up. Um, I agree. I've been saying Rivera has been in the hot seat the last couple of years anyway. Um, uh, so a lot of speculation is that they don't like the way they handle the Cam Newton situation with the injuries and whatnot. Kind of hanging hanging dry a little bit. I don't know. Uh, but we do know, we do know that Rivera is right on the hot seat, as it was anyway. So, um, yeah, not surprising here. It's more, more about the timing. I'm curious. If, I, I think he could get another, get another job somewhere else. I don't know where, but uh, we'll see. Um, the Panthers get a head start now on the head coaching search now going forward, as they would not make the playoffs this year, obviously. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, yeah, last night NBA slate was great. The Miami Heat, 15-5, big win against Toronto um, on the road. Big win they needed, too, because they played night Boston on the road again. So back to back nights. So they stole the game. I thought they would. They, they won the game. I didn't think they'd win, to be honest with you. So kudos to the Heat for winning that game. And without Goran Dragic, too, especially. So the Heat right now are tied for the two seed in the, in the East. Uh, Lakers win again, bounce back last night against Denver. Um, Clippers also win again as well last night, too. So um, solid night from the top teams in the NBA last night. Um, very, very fascinating NBA season so far. We'll, we'll get more in the NBA talk as we get closer to the end of the, of the season in the NFL, of course. Um, but, but it's early, but it's a lot of interesting, intriguing um things going on in the NBA. So that's about it for now. Um, I'm on Twitter, of course, at Egypt number 7. Um, I'll try to do this again tomorrow. Uh, hopefully, uh, my picks for the Thursday night game between the Cowboys and the Bears and all that. Uh, love you guys. Talk to you guys later. God bless y'all, and see ya.